and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. Back at my standard desk with my old-fashioned Nikon D7100 fully repaired. And I thought, since the camera's just come back, it might be useful to do a quick summary of the year. What's good and what's bad? Well, the first thing, obviously, that was really bad was letting the camera fall off my desk to smash the lens break it away from the camera body, ruining all of the bayonet fittings, and costing me six to seven weeks worth of waiting for the camera to come back. That was not a good start. However, other things have been good. One is my Twisby Go, which I still really, really like. It's got a 1.1 stub nib, which I find delightful. I absolutely adore the filling mechanism, which is so quick and easy. Dunk it in your ink, push down, let it go, and it sucks ink up. So straightforward, so simple and delightful. And because it's just a push on, pull off cap, it's a pen that I have in my pocket all day, every day. It's probably got more used than any other pen, just because it's always there when I'm out and about. So that, is a good thing. The only thing I don't like about it so much is the cheap looking plastic, especially up there, because it's just just looks cheap really. I, I don't particularly like that. However, it takes the same nib and section as far as I can see as the standard Twisby Eco. So you can change nibs, it can stay with you all the time, it has a huge ink capacity, really handy, feels nice in the hand, very light. I don't particularly like pen, light pens normally, but it feels good in the hand. So all in all, that gets high marks. I like that. Second pen, which is an absolute delight because this was given to me and I'm still very grateful. This is the Opus 88 in blue. And I wasn't expecting to like this, but I really like a number of things about it. One is the strong clip. There's no way that pen's going to fall out of your pocket. I've had expensive pens and pencils like Graf von Faber-Castell. And um, my first Graf von Faber-Castell perfect pencil was beautiful with a lovely spring-loaded clip. It, it looked gorgeous. It was wonderful to carry. cost a huge amount of money. And the first one got lost somewhere around Fatherford because I was tickling my son on a dog walk and he must have hit my pocket at some point. And it was such a weak spring clip that it flew out of my pocket at some point. And of course somebody else found it and has had a nice perfect pencil ever since worth a couple of hundred quid. This I wasn't expecting to like. However, it just feels gorgeous in the hand. It's got a nicely... I wouldn't say it's tapered exactly, it's more sort of curved in towards the nib. And it just feels really good in the hand. I never have pens capped, posted, I should say, so that's got nothing to do with me. If I had any single comment against it, there is one thing that I do find a little bit annoying, and that is it takes a while to unscrew the cap, and then when you have, you've got to unscrew the back end too to release all the ink from the eye dropping filling mechanism so that you can have ink flow. But I, what I tend to do is use this for notes every day. So when I'm working on my latest bit of research, I'll just have the cap loosely on, on the table. And then when I want to use it, one quarter turn or so, and I can, I'm ready to write again. I don't bother screwing this in in between uses and I'm finding this I've just been head butted in the back of the legs by a ridgeback dog away go to bed come on don't knock that camera over and break it on pain of death go on go to bed so that I really really like I'm using it every day it is a great tool now next on my list is the Leuchtturm and Say hello to the dog. This is proving to be 
fabulously useful. Now I'm not going to show you what's in here because it's all to do with my next book, but I am finding I turn to this and I'm making notes on characters, I'm breaking down an entire story into sections, trying to figure out which sections need to be adjusted and amended or added to, additional comments about the work I need to do with the book. This I think is going to become a standard working tool that I use all the time. I do use Leuchtturm already, I've got a lovely grey one which I was using to put ideas down for all my books. I think I'm going to keep that. This is for books I'm actually working on at that time so that all the notes and comments are a bit more pertinent to that book at the time. Now trouble is that leaves me with this delightful moleskin which is as you can see in absolutely pristine condition and unused. Now the trouble is moleskin paper is absolutely useless when you use a fountain pen on it. It ends up looking like that on both sides of the paper because it just soaks up ink like blotting paper. Absolutely hopeless. And I was thinking well that's okay I can get by with this by using it with a pencil or something else. Actually you know what I don't think I'm going to use it. So I'm going to be putting this up as a free giveaway uh, before too long. If you don't follow me already on Instagram or Twitter, follow me. I'm at Michael Jex on both of them. No underline, no nothing, just at Michael Jex. Look me up there and in the next few days you will see this being offered. And it occurred to me that actually I've got a number of things that I don't use and don't need. So it was about time I did something with them. So a second thing that will be turning up before too long is this lovely little Rhodia pocket notebook. I don't know what type of paper it is, but it feels probably 90 GSM. It feels a bit thicker than 80. doesn't feel quite as hard as 100 GSM. But it's a beautiful mm, real leather wrapped notepad. And I bought it some years ago as a present for my wife who never wanted it. So I took it after that and to be honest I've never used it. So what's the point of keeping it hanging around? Somebody else will be able to make good use of that so keep your eyes open on Twitter and Instagram and that could be yours. But a notepad with nothing to write in it is a bit hopeless so I'm also going to throw in this really rather nice platinum uh, pen which is based on the preppy. You can see from the mechanism there. I'm not going to give away these preppies because I use them for sketching but it's exactly the same mechanism as you can see and it writes really very nicely. It's a 0.5 millimeter nib stainless steel. It's got this lovely glowing red barrel and cap. The clip is really quite stiff, does grip nicely. It's not an expensive pen, I think it's £10 or so, but really I used it to review it once and I'm not likely to ever use it again. I've got Twisby Goes, I've got Delightful Opuses, I've got Viscontis. This is just one pen too many. So that too will be going and I'll probably put that together with the notepad because I'm just kind like that. And then for other people, I haven't actually fully reviewed this. It's a Majest Touch Minila. Now I was given this Minila because it's a minimum layout. Imaginative naming, I know. Now I bought myself a new keypad 18 months ago now, I think, from a delightful firm up in Stroud. And I started chatting to the bloke and he was interested by the fact that I was a writer. And while chatting to him, he mentioned that actually he had been the supplier to Terry Pratchett. And I thought, anyone who was a supplier to Terry is a friend of mine. So we kept on chatting and he, he was quite interested in what I was writing about. I bought a keyboard from him. 
it's down there, it's ever so nice. It's the Majest Touch, but it's the slightly larger layout, and it has the keys, which are Cherry MX, and what are these? I can't see. But the ones on my standard keyboard are the ones that click as you press each key. But with this, which is UK layout, it's not American for those of you who might have been interested, so it's not directly relevant. This he sent along with my keyboard as a gift out of the goodness of his heart. And he's a very nice chap and I still talk to him now. But he sent me this, which has lovely keys, which are no click and are really quite quiet. Cherry MX, whatever colour they are. And they're really rather lovely. This keyboard I like because you plonk it down in front of you. When I used to sell word processors many, many years ago with WordPlex, I used to sell very much on the basis that you could take the keyboard, put it in front of you and it's in the right position immediately because it's exactly the size of the keyboard. So you just put it down in front of you and you're ready to type. Goody goody. This however is surplus to my requirements because I don't use that type of keyboard. So I'm going to be giving this away as well in the next couple of weeks. And because I mentioned this to the chap who runs the company, it is possible that I might get more keyboards to review as well. And when I do, they will probably be giveaways as well. Because I don't need more than one keyboard, to be honest. So there you go. A quick summary of the year. Bad news on the camera. Good news the camera's back. Bad news on the moleskin. I can't use it. Good news for you. You can have it if you want it. Bad news for me, a Christmas present that went totally wrong. Good news for you, you can have it if you want, with a pen to write in it. What more can you ask for? And excellent news for me, a new way of working with the Leuchtturm, and it's working extremely well. Good news for me, a delightful pen, a second delightful pen. And that is about it for now. I hope that was interesting. I hope that you're going to enjoy some of the other things I'm doing. I'm now doing more videos per week because every Sunday I'm trying to write about a writer that I find inspiring. So that doesn't mean I'm talking about his books necessarily or her books. It means it's someone that helped persuade me that writing might not be such a bad idea as a career. Then I'm also going to be doing a regular series on Tuesdays of five minute reviews and that's much more talking about specific books that I really enjoyed and which I think you might enjoy as well. The first one was last week and that was talking about The Gates of Stone by Angus McAllen. It's not the sort of book you'd necessarily expect me to rave about because it's not crime, it's very much an epic um, fantasy story but Angus is an exceptionally good writer and I found it really quite staggeringly good. So I can thoroughly recommend that. I will put links up. Now let's see, that will be the last video. So I'll put the link to the five minute reviews there and I might put some other links elsewhere as well. But if you like that and if you like the thought of all the other things I'm doing, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. But when you've done that, I didn't know this, you have to hit the bell shape beside it and then you'll get notified every time a new video comes through. It's amazing what you learn after two or three years using YouTube. All of a sudden people say, but didn't you tell them about putting the bell? No, I didn't because I didn't know about it. So there you go. So hit the subscribe. If you've got comments, stick the comments down the bottom, please. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd be very grateful if you could hit the like button because apparently that hits the algorithm for YouTube and other people get to hear about me. Poor devils, what more can I say? Thanks very much for watching, take care. I'm now going back to, and in answer to the person who asked, this is a mixture of Earl Grey and Assam tea, half and half, very tasty. Thank you very much, cheers.